Thank you for the invitation to debate. I would say that it will be a, a new challenge to yes. defend Gemsite. I've been after the presentation of uh, Cornwall's data, but I have to congratulate, of course, my colleague for this very uh, important data. So anyway, uh, I would not go into detail because we know the data, but from a long time, we have robust data uh, regarding uh, adjuvant monotherapy in uh, pancreatic cancer, and you can see that uh, we have long-term benefit, and if you see uh, the Japanese data uh, using monotherapy S1, uh, we uh, could get impressive uh, data from this uh, study. So before ASCO, and I think that there will be a period before and after ASCO, I think, uh, the standard statement uh, are that GEM is equal to 5FU with long-term moderate but long-term benefit. S1 uh, show impressive data, but only in Japan, both in, in DFS and five-year overall survival, but we don't know in Western world. Adjunction of uh, capacitabin to GEM show only moderate improvement, uh, amazingly not uh, in DFS, and uh, slight moder and moderate uh, to overall survival. So we are not really convinced about this combination. It is not really a new standard of care, but uh, 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 preferably uh, a new option. Uh, and looking to toxicity and tolerance, which is of course an important uh, matter of discussion, we can see that there is a good tolerance, very good tolerance profile for S1, less than 5% of grade 3, 4 uh, toxicity. When we use uh, bolus 5 few. Uh, I will uh, show you, uh, this is uh, some uh, trouble with stomatitis and diarrhea, and you can see, you, you will see that the uh, occurrence of such uh, side effect is not so low. And from gemcitabin, we have convenient uh, use, but we have to uh, deal with uh, hematologic toxicity. So again, before I score, when uh, the, we see the usual standard, we can see that long-term uh, data offers uh, a 20% uh, survival at five years and a 10% at 10 years. But we know that a lot of patients will die or recur within uh, the first year. And uh, again, importantly, 30 to 40% of patients did not complete adjuvant chemotherapy. So we are entering in the era of combination therapy. Beside the prodigy data, we are waiting for the Italian data, and of course, with uh, the APAC data, with the combination of uh, GEM and uh, Abraxan. So it's clear that the Folfirinox is the winner by uh, knockout. Uh, when we see the uh, Cronos data, I will not go uh, back to this uh, impressive data. But if we uh, compare to the uh, no data, you can see that uh, there is uh, a close data to the uh, JASPAC uh, results. And if we look to long-term data, three to five years survival, uh, the data uh, from Folferinox are uh, not so uh, far to those provided by the uh, JASPAC. And I would also stress to you uh, because I think that the, the story is not completely uh, finished. Uh, when we use gemcitabine based on uh, NT1 uh, biomarker evaluation, maybe we could uh, improve the use of gemcitabine. Of course, we have only retrospective data and subgroup analysis, but you can see that the overall survival based on NT1 data are not so uh, bad, and meta-analysis also shown that we can use NT1 uh, derived uh, gemcitabine uh, if we can rely on a good biomarker, either a good monoclonal antibody or maybe in the future uh, gene uh, signature. We have also shown that the gem, uh, gemcitabine benefit is increasing over time uh, when looking to the different uh, data, and this is probably due maybe to a better selection of patients to improve surgery, to improve. Uh, the way we, uh, we give chemotherapy, but also probably uh, that uh, we have no more active chemotherapy at recurrence. So coming to the selection criteria uh, in the Prodige uh, 24, I think that they're very strict, close to that uh, in the metastatic uh, study uh, with uh, good PS patient, 
age less than 80, no uh, hair disease, no severe comorbidities, but we have to add here important uh, issue uh, regarding the post-op recovery and the absence of uh, IBD, but also post-op diarrhea or subocclusion that can occur after uh, Whipple uh, procedure. And if we look to the tolerance and the uh, treatment exposure and completion, uh, as Thierry uh, mentioned, you can see that it's not so uh, evident that we can complete for a full treatment, and we can see that the, the, the relative dose intensity uh, was lower, and that there is a uh, uh, more early stop due to uh, toxicity, investigator decision, and patient decision. This is also uh, important to uh, mention. When we look to the tolerance profile in the uh, PRODIS24, you can see that the, the main issue is diarrhea, around 20%, uh, and this is more than the, uh, the number of observed in the metastatic uh, study. You have also fatigue, vomiting, mucositis. Uh, and we can see that probably diarrhea is the main issue, probably linked to the uh, uh, surgical uh, procedure and the number of resected lymph nodes. Uh, neutropenia, neutropenia is not an issue, but uh, more than, uh, around than, um, uh, 60% of the patients uh, were using a grow factor. Coming back to the toxicity driven by uh, 5-FU bolus, you can see that stomatitis, fatigue, and diarrhea are also a concern uh, as compared to gemcitabine. This is uh, data from the SPAC-4. So I would not uh, uh, recommend it probably to use bolus 5-FU because you have uh, also a toxicity profile uh, worse than uh, gemcitabine. If we look to the efficacy, of course, the forest plot show that all subgroup benefit from folferinox, but you can see that, for instance, for H or for N status, the magnitude of the benefit is not so evident. Of, of course, it's subgroup analysis, and this is not uh, strong evidence. So coming to the selection of regimen, what can we have as uh, different criteria? If we consider patient, you have to consider the performance status with a cutoff of one, the age, with a cutoff probably of 70, 75, the nutritional status, the post hoc recovery, the comorbidities, the bowel disorders, the personal choice, and the convenience. Also, an important uh, set, uh, criteria is probably the setting. As mentioned, we will go more and more to perioperative therapy. And so, if the patient is uh, exposed to a, a long sequence of neoadjuvant therapy, you have to take that into account and maybe to adapt your adjuvant therapy, uh, uh, even if the patient, for instance, do not respond to uh, neoadjuvant folferinox. And we know that there is emerging work uh, to evaluate what is a pathological response uh, after uh, neoadjuvant therapy. The context of the tumor is also important. We have seen that maybe uh, the N status, the R status could uh, be uh, taken into account, the persistence of C99 elevation, and the future is to use maybe to monitor or adjuvant therapy of circulating DNA, and to use also in the future uh, genomics to drive our therapy on biomarker for fluoropyridine, as mentioned for gemcitabine, and also maybe for folferinox, and there will be a work in progress, maybe trying to uh, to uh, discriminate the, the benefit of fulferinox based on a genomic signature. And there is some emerging evidence on that. Uh, regarding the morphid classification, you have two different types of pancreatic cancer, the classical type and the basal lacrim. And you can see that uh, the classical type is the only one that responds to uh, chemotherapy, mainly fulferinox. So also there is a way here to, uh, to explore the use of adjuvant chemotherapy. So to conclude, what can be put in the balance? I think that fulferinox at efficacy, even at reduced dose, the tolerance is manageable, and uh, it's indicated for fit patient after surgery, while gemcitabine uh, gives a lesser survival benefit, 
a better tolerance and a better convenience probably is indicated for lesser fit patient, age, PS, diarrhea, maybe for lower risk, if we can consider that patient, and we have to use genomics in the future. So my conclusion is that modify fulfirinox is the new standard of care unless contraindication. Gemcitabine, maybe uh, S1 also in uh, Japan, and we have to learn more in Western world, uh, remains a valuable option for less fit patient, and we have to use the adjuvant approach uh, within the context of uh, molecular and precision medicine. Uh, thank you for your attention.